guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Depths, back with another Crisscross Chronicles Sagas. Now, last time we had just made it to the second continent and worked our way over to the True Mate Cemetery. However, we haven't started this area yet. And despite the fact that it's called a cemetery, it seems a little bit more like a forest, but either way, you're going to be facing a lot of wind based enemies in this area, so. If you have Terra, then it's worth using her. But if you don't have her boosted up, then that's still okay. I'm not even using a group that actually has Terra. But I also haven't raised my stats at all since the previous area, considering the fact that I've completely destroyed those enemies. Maybe this time it might actually cause a little bit of a challenge. But before we start, I'd like to learn a little bit of spells with Maya, just because. Considering that her and Luna can both learn all different sorts of elements, it might be worth it to try and learn those. Like Quake will hit all enemies at once, so that will be helpful against enemies that actually are resistant to physical attacks. And eventually I'll get her to learn Explosion. But with that said, we're going to start this. Now, right off the bat, you're in a very, very big area. You may also notice that the battle music changed. It, it's different for each continent. Or at least each area of a continent. Because this continent, which is the southern one, also known as the Commons region, has a whole bunch of different areas on it. But yeah, these guys aren't doing too much damage right now. In fact, they didn't even get a successful blind off. A lot of damage from these skills. These hornets aren't exactly resilient against anything. And of course, Raid misses. I also went and got Teleconnect Swipe for Kizuna, so should be able to hit all of them at once with physical. But this nice little setup will damage everybody, regardless of what they're resistant to, unless they just completely ignore it. But you also gotta be careful which way you go. Because it's very easy to get lost since this is practically a maze. And yeah, these enemies can heal each other, you might want to be careful of that. Rave kind of sucks at magic, so it's not going to help. These guys might also be resistant to it as well. In fact, some enemies might also be weak against fire a little bit, but I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, they have magic immunity. If Ember Burst doesn't work, then they're immune to it. Inverse Burst is, is, ignores your defenses, but it doesn't mean it will always damage. This one might get a little bit long because it's kind of hard to manu maneuver. See here we have all four enemies. And I got the jump on my knee. Slime is immune to physical. In that case, it might be better just to have Maya do it. Maya is a heavy magic user. 
that's the raise her magic stats because she gets a, a bonus boost off of that. Each character gets their own bonuses off of um, different stats raised. That's basically how it is and everything. <coughs> Like, Rave has a lot of HP. And even later on in, in the higher parts of the game where you can get lots and lots of HP, his would still be higher because he has an innate boost on it. And like I said before, you won't really raise max HP to its uppermost limit without a, a crap ton of grinding, so his HP boost will always be in use. The other stats, not exactly so much. And that actually did some damage, so I'm on par with their stats. Someone that can attack all enemies at once through both physicals and magic just to speed things up. You really don't want to get stuck in this place. Not if you're at the same stats I have. Because enemies have gotten a substantial boost from the second continent. I mean, from the first to the second continent, so it actually does quite a bit. Actually bring items. I mean, you can carry 255 of each type of um, MP and HP potion. Like, there's 255 of these. You're just gonna want them. It makes it very, very easy to heal yourself as you go along, but later areas will even push that number to the limit. But you won't have to worry about that until practically the end game. Speaking of which, some of the some of the end game areas are actually programmed into the demo if you want to try them out, but you need to get a massive, and I repeat massive stat boost in order to do all that. Because the 
will be random encounters, but you still have to learn what to do in order to get past these guys. You'll still want to fight them just in order to get some stuff, but you're going to want to learn how to avoid fighting them. And some of the new groups will just tear you apart when you first face them. If I were to put Luna in there, she'd be even faster. But I mainly picked the group that's the lowest level because I want to start leveling a few guys. I want them all to be at least level 25. That way everybody can just learn everything, even if I don't have them on the active front. But you will win everybody's ultimate as soon as possible because those have the most use out of anything. Despite the fact that they will only be used once per battle, it doesn't change the fact that they are incredibly, incredibly powerful. You think the skills like super attack, heavy attack, deadly attack are really strong? The ultimates will make it a total difference. The only downside to these ultimate abilities is the fact that they're kind of situational. Because they'll do specific damage to certain enemies. Or, in the case of Maya, her ultimate isn't even an attack, it's actually a buff. A massive buff. But I'll show off what they do later on. I will eventually I don't even recommend facing the in-game bosses without having those. Especially if you find the boss is really weak to a certain element, you can bring in that character's ultimate and just completely decimate them. I'll save my MP this fight. If they want to comply. Interestingly enough, the follow-ups, it says they use magic in order to attack, but it's a special kind of magic that uses physical and magical attack. So with that said, even if you're immune to one, you'll still get damaged because it uses the other. Unless you're just flat out immune to everything, in which case that means it's an unwinnable fight. I think that was just free bunny ears. If you get surprised, you're not running from that fight. So be prepared to actually take the damage. Right? Maya that earth spell and haven't even used it yet. And now's a good chance to do so. Because Kazuna's not gonna damage these guys. Sadly, Har Haruki, Raven, and Kazuna are all faster than Maya. much it still helps.
Yeah, at this point in the game, it gets a lot trickier, so you're going to see me healing up a little bit between fights. You also have to keep in mind not just the strength of the enemy, but what enemies can possibly do to you. Because right now there's a chance I can actually see my character get killed. If I get the chance, I'm gonna get them to use um, EX. Somebody gets knocked out. Revive is actually better than throwing um, a revival potion. Away. Yeah, that's because the way that works is the revival potion is here to heal a really low amount of your health back. About, I'd say five percent when you're knocked out. But when you use um, the revival spell, it will instead actually restore, I think, roughly 50% of their health back. But if you use something like mass revival, then it's going to restore even less. Now, even though there's no storyline, the whole point of doing this area is to advance things in the demo. Because you're still pretty much unable to access a lot of areas. Now when the storyline is actually added in a real game, you'll still have to go through this area first. But I'll explain bits of what the storyline will be. Yeah, in the case of the party getting the upper hand, they might still attack before you can. It's a heavily speed base. Now's a good time to use that yes. Actually, doesn't know why. If Raid did that much with the end, sure, it doesn't probably do one. But the whole point of that is the fact that you're not going to be able to have that all the time. So get EX Cure, EX anything is going to a lot of people at once. It's roughly going to get used a few times for a fight. Especially when you get the ultimate healing ability called Remaker. And these slimes are definitely going to be one of your biggest threats. Because it could outright just kill me if all three have to cast that. I'm a bit dangerous on stats right now. White wants to give me a mix of everybody. Okay, 
one piece in your head. Like naturally, you're going to see slimes be kind of resistant to physicals. Because you're trying to slice a, go a glob, I don't think you're going to do too much damage to that in real life. Now, a yeah, little unknown fact, you can actually walk in between these. Now, in this case, I'm going to... Up. Quick save. And the storyline with this is the fact that Azazel, who you've previously beaten twice and killed himself off, this is his sister who thinks you killed him. And she fights you as a result of that. But she's also part of the Oregon Corporation. So for her magic pretty weak. Her health is really up there. Regardless of who you use, there's dialogue based on which characters are allowed to fight. And it did. And it did a lot. But with the growth necklaces, this gives a lot. There's also two new items you'll see. Magician Grip Gloves and the Viking Helmet. If you now defeat it, you can actually access this thing. And you have the Dispersion Crystal. Now it's just a matter of making your way back. But to see the equipment I just had, gotten Viking Helmet, and a Strength Increase, pretty much a Physical Increase. And the Magician gr Grip Gloves, they only work on guys, meaning only Raven Cosmic can equip them. But it's an MP cost reduction. Not a bad idea to give it on Raven if you want to have him use more magic, but he's not made for that, so... It could be a bad idea to try that. Kazuko, on the other hand, is well-rounded, so that helps. You'll have a well-rounded person on, on both the female and male front because of Kazuka and Kazuya. So the twins aren't a bad way to go. And also, with that boss fight, everybody should have gained CP from it, even if they didn't get experience points. I meant to chase the active part, but I'll do so after this. Yeah, these guys are resistant to physical. I remember that much. A well good spell will hit them pretty hard. And I haven't done a well going yet. But yeah, swapping around the active party. Let's make sure they all have something good. I think it's 
spread shock won't hurt you. Cross slash. I actually have music from different sources. If you recognize this music, you must have played a game called Witch Girl. And it is an 18 plus game, but it did have some pretty good music in some parts. That's the music this area is based off of that. Now the rest of these hell. Too bad these guys are about to go. And because it heals a certain percentage, it may actually be worth using cure later on down the line. It's eventually going to get outclassed by heal. But because cure costs so much, there's so much of a difference between the MP cost, you're going to want it. But eventually they're both out quest but rebigger and just use my And since it's just straight up magic, Park you can use this now. Ability is still in a magic spell. I probably should have healed. I wouldn't be surprised if Kazia gets knocked out. You want your health to be above 60% at all times. That's why. Ah, he still got stuck. original hit, so getting follow-up hits on skills is like basically the way to go, even if you think it'd be a waste. And I'm also getting near the point where I can start adding some really good items because I've also programmed something in there. You'll see when we get back. This place is amazing, you gotta learn how to navigate. And I could run from fights, but it still take a little bit because of the fact that you gotta make sure you're faster than these guys, and they are currently faster. Which means I'd have to go through the trouble of getting sloth double casted on all of them, and then getting reflex double cast on us. Reflex on 
us is not a problem. The clock on them would be. Because sloth tends to resist people that are just flat out resistant against them. And I've lost track of where I'm supposed to go. Again, this place is amazing. Unfortunately, hard to start to run out of the door up on that. First look at the spell. If I had any buffs on me, it would pretty much remove those. Okay, that's my assist. Well, let's see. are actually quite powerful, so they actually help out a lot. And I screwed that up. A lot of this is the way. And even if it doesn't do damage, it can still make a few of them just become completely out of the equation. Back to the map, you'll notice something new that popped up. This is conveniently nearby this little heel pond. I'm gonna try to see if I can get really close without triggering the fight. There we go. Save up in case something happens because it's easier just to reload. Now this, I do believe, is completely different than the last fight. This guy's fast and hits pretty freaking hard. 
be careful. He also has arrow attacks, just like Narissa. And what makes it even worse is he has two moves a turn. I hope you're prepared. Somebody needs to be healed up. Ooh, wrong guy. I guess it wasn't the wrong guy. Maya just correctly keep everybody healthy. Because she needs to. We need more MP. Let's take it. We don't have enough back on the yet. This guy keeps dodging those attacks, this is going to be very painful. fight with that that's why these guys are getting very very resistant what does he have against hard team Special all up I mentioned. Just look what it does. 
Actually, let's hold on for a second. Heal up before anything happens. Because we can just do it again. But just to prove the point. You see everybody's AC. And their stats are around like, oh, less than 2,000. Except for Maya, who has over 2,000 magic. This stuff's not bad. Watch what this Ultra All-Up does, which is the biggest stat boost in the game from any of these. Just a huge chunk to everything. And if you look again at those stats, some have cracked 2,000. Maya's even exactly jumped up pretty nicely, almost a 3,000 magic. This is what I was talking about. Ultra All Ups are the best item in the game, but they're also the hardest to get. On top of this, they are also really, really limited. You will not have more than 10 at once, I guarantee you. But that is just a noble difference, because Mia got almost 50% of her health and MP just off that. <coughs> DFD with Crisscross Cross Chronicles Saga's Part 6, and I will see you next time, guys.